What's up guys, Justin here, coming at you with the mammoth Craigslist deal. And I posted a picture of this entire deal on our Facebook and our Twitter probably a while ago now. I'm not sure if this video will be uploaded before the end of our Midwest Gaming Classic series or not. But uh, regardless, I had to get the video filmed because I needed my table back here. I had all the games and stuff stacked up on this table and there was no room to do anything else on it. So I had to get the video filmed and uh, the whole deal kind of just begs for a story. So I'll try to sum it up as quick as I can. I know some people like to just see the pickups and get on with it and other people kind of like to hear the story behind things. So I'll try to uh, appeal to both worlds here. But anyway, the original Craigslist ad got posted uh, before we even left for the Midwest Gaming Classic. And the seller lived like an hour away from here, but we were going to be driving right through his town on the way to MGC. So when I saw the ad, I got a hold of him. He was asking $600 for everything, which is obviously a crap ton of money. But realistically, that was probably like significantly below what it would have been like pieced out retail, you know. So I asked if he was firm on the price. He went down to $500 and said that that was the lowest he was going to go. And so I was kind of talking to Ryan, getting his opinion, and we just kind of decided that we're going to be buying so much cool stuff on the way down to the convention as it is, and uh, it's going to be a semi-expensive weekend as it is, so it, was just, it wasn't going to work out. So just kind of lost contact with the guy. However, after we got back from MGC two weekends later, we were headed through his town again on our way to a Three Days Grace concert, which was awesome, by the way. And so just out of curiosity, a couple days before we left, I texted the guy again and asked if he still had everything. And he told me that he did, and so I asked if he was still from on the $500. He told me to make an offer. So I said I would come pick everything up that, that Saturday for $400. And that's when he hit me back with the offer that I could not refuse. He told me that if I could do $450 and come pick it up that same night, that he would throw in all this extra N64 stuff that he had. And he had some pretty good N64 stuff, some pretty unique N64 stuff, just stuff that you never see up here. So I was definitely interested, kind of in a predicament though, because you know it was in the evening at this point. Uh, he said he wasn't getting off work until 9 o'clock, so it was going to be a, a late night Craigslist deal as it was. And uh, I mean, the banks were closed and everything. I had no means of, of getting the cash for him. So I uh, kind of had to scrap, but I ended up getting the cash. Thank you very much, Alex, <laughs> if you're watching. Uh, but anyway, uh, we went ahead and, and went along with the deal. Um, and luckily, I got my brother to go with me to pick it up, because uh, like I said, it was late at night. And the seller actually offered to meet me halfway, which was very convenient, although there really is no good place to meet halfway between where I am and where he was. So we ended up meeting at like this uh, gas station convenience mini mart thing. But like I said, it was, it was pretty late, so they were closed, and there was not a street light or any kind of light for just miles in either direction. <laughs> and it was pitch black, guys posted up in his white Escalade when we get there, so I'm getting kind of nervous, like, stepping out of the car, but like I said, I had my brother with me, and uh, the guy, the seller ended up being a pretty cool guy. Uh, he had everything boxed up, ready to go and whatnot, so loaded it in my car, I checked some of the game cases, dug to the bottom of the game box, and pulled out some of the cases to make sure there's, there was discs and stuff in them. I wasn't just getting a bunch of empty cases, and uh, everything was there. So uh, we got the deal done. So for 450 bucks, I'll show you guys everything that I got. I'll start out with the N64 stuff that I got, kind of as a bonus. I mean, I guess technically I paid for it, but this is what he kind of threw in last second to make the deal worth it, in my opinion. And I'll start out with actually some Japanese N64 games. Uh, like I said, you just don't ever see stuff like this around here anyway. He actually had the first Mario Party complete in box. Again, Japanese version of the game. Uh, box has seen better days. The end is pretty beat up there, but then again, it's <laughs> from the late 90s and came all the way from Japan, so it's kind of be to be expected, but uh, it was complete. I really like these plastic cases, um, plastic inserts that they use as well. So there's the cartridge there, and it had a couple different manuals in here. I really like the artwork on that one. So very cool there. And then he had the other two Mario Parties, uh, just loose cartridge, but uh, here's Mario Party 2, Japanese, and then uh, Mario Party 3. So very cool to see some Japanese stuff around here. I don't think I own a single Japanese N64 game, so that was pretty cool to see. He also had some other pretty quality N64 stuff though, uh, including <laughs> a Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time complete in box. And uh, I don't know that I've ever seen this box before. It's the, uh, the Player's Choice Ocarina of Time box. But uh, this one was complete and in decent shape anyway. The cartridge is in good shape. I had the manual and all the inserts in here. And the box is, I mean, not perfect. Got some dings on the corners and stuff, but 
not bad condition by any means. And then the other complete in box game that he had was a Mario Golf. And this one's in a little better condition, I think, than the Zelda. It's got some damage on that end there, but uh, this one was, I believe, complete as well. Yep, manual and the cartridge are in this one as well. And then the last N64 game that he had was just loose cartridge, but a copy of Mario Tennis, so not going to complain with that. And then he had a couple systems. Uh, actually, I should probably say like one and a half systems. <laughs> um, I'll explain that in a second when I show it, but uh, here's the first system we got with the deal. A black N64 system with the expansion pack in there, so cool little bonus. Uh, this one came with both of the adapters for it here. Uh, I believe this AV cord is just one of those cheapo, like, yeah, it's like one of these, like, three foot, three or four foot adapters, but, uh, not a big deal. And then, he had four controllers with that one. Uh, an ice blue one here. Uh, it's got a, you know, the joystick's used, but, uh, it should still work, I'm assuming. And then he had three, uh, gray controllers as well, so, one, two, and then the last one here, I believe, had a first party memory card in it underneath the wires there and again all these joysticks are used but not abused I guess they should still work and then the other <laughs> system or uh, half a system I guess uh, was this one here <laughs> this white N64 system and um, this isn't like an import like special edition system or anything it's actually just I believe a black system that he looks like he spray painted it actually judging from the uh, the underside here looks like he spray painted it but uh, he did a good job on it actually I mean no real complaints on my end. I wish it was kind of like glossed over, but uh, maybe I can do that myself. Uh, but yeah, it looks like all the pieces for it are actually in here. Um, this bag's got like all the reset button, power button, expansion pack drawer, and, and all the other pieces and screws look like they're in there. And then it had the, uh, the board with it as well. So I'm assuming he might have been trying to like mod the system to play the, uh, the Japanese games. I believe you need to cut something in the uh, the cartridge slot to get the games to fit in the system um, so maybe he just like painted it and then lost interest but um I might be able to complete that modification myself actually and uh, put this thing back together like I said it looks like all the pieces are there so I'll make that my uh, my next project but I don't know what I'm gonna do with it I'll probably just end up keeping it I mean it's kind of cool and like I said he did a good job on it so maybe I'll just use it to uh, to play some Japanese Mario Party uh, but anyway, that system also had a power adapter with it, no AV cord, but I'll find one, not a big deal. And then there was a couple other N64 accessories that came with this deal. We got a gold memory card here. Um, I don't think this is anything significant, it just feels like a cheap memory card that you might even paint it, I can't really tell. But uh, there's that, and then there was also a transfer pack in there. And uh, that was all the N64 stuff that I got. Again, for that extra 50 bucks, I mean, even even just a couple of the games alone would have been worth that. So I will cut right now. I'm going to clear this table off, and I will show you guys the other systems and accessories that I got with the deal. So stay tuned. So here is the rest of the systems I got with the deal, along with a huge box of controllers and cables and stuff. I'll start out with uh, two PlayStation 2 Slim systems here, just the, uh, the black models. They're in decent shape. This one's a little bit scratched up, but uh, he told me that both of these work. And then I also got two PS2 Fat systems with the deal. Here's one here, and then the other one had the network adapter attached to the uh, the back of it there. And then the other two systems were two original Xbox systems. Oh, I forgot how heavy these things were. There's one of them there, and then the other one over here. Like I said, I just got a big box of controllers and whatnot down here. There's one of those Pelican racing wheels that seem to just take up too much space nowadays. And I'll start rifling off these controllers here. Uh, we got a cool looking, it's like a gray, it's a see-through gray PS2 controller, but it's got like a bluish hue to it. I don't know that I've ever seen that one before. That one's kind of cool. Uh, we got a Mad Cat's PS2 controller. Uh, this one, it's a game pad. It might even be a PlayStation 1. It feels pretty uh, cheap though. We got a Maximo Gaming Concepts PS2 controller. I don't know that I've ever even heard of that brand before. Uh, another DualShock PS2 controller here. A really broken DualShock PS2 controller. No uh, R2 or L2 buttons on there. <laughs> Missing the rubber on the joysticks. We got another PS2 DualShock. Another one. Another one here. That might be all for PlayStation 2 controllers. We got 
a behemoth <laughs> original original Xbox controller here. And we also got a bunch of these wireless ones. Uh, and, uh, these are Mad Cats, I believe, orange and green. And there was also a bluish, clear-looking one down there. I believe the receivers for these are floating around in the bottom of the box somewhere. But we got a blue Xbox controller, a Joytech, Joy Tech rather, wireless controller, a what is this one? Oh, it looks like original Xbox. Uh, yeah, that's Microsoft. A Mad Cats wireless controller. And a couple more PlayStation controllers floating around down here, see-through blue, and then this kind of cool-looking like midnight blue uh, Intech controller there. I believe that was all for the controllers, so onto the uh, adapters just real quick. I'm not going to show all these, but here are the two PS2 Slim power adapters. And uh, we got a bunch of AV and RF cables here. Um, I don't know if all the systems are complete, but most of them will be anyway, and I've got extra adapters and stuff for those, so one more handful of adapters here. And then the rest of the stuff down here is, again, just like the receivers for the wireless controllers, along with uh, a bunch of memory cards and uh, AA batteries floating around in the bottom of the box there. So as for like the 300 or so PS2 and original Xbox games I got with the deal, I'm not going to sit here and take the time to go through each one individually. <laughs> I'd be here for 45 minutes and I don't think anyone's going to sit through that. But what I will do is I will set them all up on the table here and I'll do like a slow pan over of all the titles with some commentary so you can guys, you guys can see all the titles that uh, that came with the deal and save yourself you know, a half hour. So stay tuned for that. I will be right back. So here's a quick pan over of the few PS1 games and all of the uh, PS2 games that I got with this deal. There's some decent titles in here. I kind of got a feeling though that the uh, the seller might be like a retired reseller or <laughs> decided to get out of the game or something because there's no like over the top high dollar titles in here by any means. But uh, there's some pretty cool ones in here. I mean we got a couple of God of Wars, the Dark Cloud there, a few of the Final Fantasies I saw, a bunch of Grand Theft Autos. As for like completeness and stuff, I can't say that I've opened all of the cases yet. But uh, I'd say the majority of the cases that I did open had their manuals. And uh, like I said, I didn't check all the discs, but all the ones I did check looked like they should play anyway. So coming down to the end here. Over here is a bag of disc-only games. I believe there's probably some original Xbox games in here as well, but it's nothing too exciting, nothing that wasn't already over here. And then some more disc-only games down here. Again, nothing too exciting. I believe there was a Wild Arms 3 in one of these, though. And then finally here we got the Guitar Hero set. Original Guitar Hero with the uh, game and the controller. Everything's in there. So that is a quick recap of all the PS1 and PS2 games I got with this deal. And I will set up the original Xbox games. As you can see, not quite as many original Xbox games, but still a pretty hearty selection, I would say. And I actually remembered he had a couple GameCube games mixed in with a lot as well. I mean, if he had this many GameCube games, I probably would have been in heaven, right? <laughs> but uh, I made sure to ask him when I saw those two in the ad, and he said that uh, those were the only two that he had. Uh, that's a cool Dead or Alive collection there, though. I've never seen that before. Both the uh, games are in there and in pretty good shape. And just like the PS2 games, I didn't open all of these cases yet, but uh, the majority of the ones that I did open had their manuals, and the, uh, the disc looked to be in okay shape. So as I'm coming down to the last row here, I want to thank you guys for sticking around and checking out my entire mammoth Craigslist haul, if you will. I'll do one quick overview shot to end this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.